So the, the Global Trends Report is just one of the many interesting things we do at the Frankfurt School UNEP Center um, about clean energy finance. So what that is doing and, and why it's interesting for the general public is because it's providing a snapshot. It's providing, um, it's providing a picture of how much investment is happening around the world when we look at renewable energy, especially um, electricity production based on renewables. Um, it is, it's done in cooperation with, with quite a few people. It's the, the, the main partner here is Bloomberg. So we do it together with Bloomberg New Energy Finance. Um, they are probably you know, the, 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 the most relevant data providers in that sense. And we also do it together with the colleagues in UNEP such that we can actually gather the global trends also on the political side. And it's also containing lots of information which we would think also interesting for the general public. Um, just to provide one example, you know, many know that there is investment taking place around the world in renewables, but you know, many have the feeling that bulk of the stuff is going on in fossil, so electricity production based on coal, on gas. But if you actually look at the investment numbers, what many people don't know is that we have twice as much investment around the world in electricity production based on renewables as compared to coal and gas combined. So when we look at investment, really the music is playing um, on the renewable side. Well, we as Frankfurt School are co-authoring the report. We are, I'm, I'm personally I'm lead editor of this report and of course it fits nicely to Frankfurt School because we are providing a perspective with, with, which is not usual for these kinds of reports. You typically see investments, if you see investments, you see them divided by wind, solar and things like that, so per technology. Um, we also do that, but what we also do is we look at the type of asset investment. So whether it's asset-based investment or whether it's private equity or venture capital. So we look at those different asset classes, well, which I think is interesting from the investor's perspective. And that's also our community. Yeah, that's so last year was an interesting year. Um, I, I think you could call it a, a more for less year. So um, we, we see investment, you know, at a very high level, around 240 billion in that year. But you know, what does that number tell us? Well, it's interesting to see that the total investment around the globe went down. So we have less investment than the year before. If you, however, look at the capacity, so that if you want the volume of power plant production capacity that was built with that money or financed with that money, it is an all time high. So, it's, so, so the costs have been going down while the, the installed capacity has been going up. So that is an interesting um, um, situation. And well, there's some drivers, not, not the one easy explanation for that. Um, one main driver is that, you know, a good message, if you want, simply that costs have gone down for renewables investments. Things have been uh, got cheaper. Um, the other side is, okay, you know, renewables seems to be quite common and as a volatile source of electricity some markets around the world struggle with the integration so the speed of um, of integration the speed of getting more renewables and integrating them into the uh, into the national electricity systems has slowed things down a bit then you know you need to think about to whom do they listen and and i think you know this this report because it's from us you know because it's looking at it from a, from a financing perspective i think this report can help because you know the, what we see and identify as trends will probably help to convince people because markets will convince people i just told you about this the fact that this is the dominant you know field of investment and you know whatever whatever happens with um, with whether people think about climate change, that it's man-made or not, the fact that these technologies are getting commercially attractive, you know, that, that's going to speak its own language and many people, for many people, that is going to be relevant. That speaks to quite an interesting thing when we look at the, at the policy side now. So um, UN climate negotiations, for example, there's a big policy process going on for years now. And what we typically have there is that the industrialized countries are considered to be responsible for most emissions in the past, which is quite, quite understandable and correct. Um, but that the sort of developing world, the global south, um, is supposed to be somehow following. So that the industrialized countries are by and large expected to lead in terms of efforts to get 
to get on with the structural change and developing countries to follow. But if we actually now look at the countries, we see that many of the so-called developing countries are endowed with resources like sun and wind, which is much more favorable than many industrialized countries. So we actually see prices um, on a commercial level competitive in many um, developing countries, countries in the global south, and that is interesting. So in some respect, you, you might say that we observe quite the opposite, that we see larger um, countries in the global south marching forward because they're increasing their investments a lot and it's actually attractive there. I think, I really think that the, the, the most important finding is that, you know, it's, it's by no means a niche anymore. This is where in terms of investment, the music plays. The challenges are now getting more diverse. It's, you know, don't necessarily look at the falling investment only. It is a result of a falling price, which means these technologies are growing up. And the, the policy needed is quite diverse now. The challenge is now to integrate a large fraction of renewables into electricity systems around the world. And these things are getting more and more commercially attractive. And it's, it's like saying, okay, the Stone Age also did not end because there were no stones available anymore, but because there were better technologies. You know, we'll probably see something similar soon for the renewables.